have Sister Dorothy Morrison, the original singer of Oh Happy Day, and we have my family to back her up, the Combs family, and the choir too, St. Mark's Community Choir. Put your hands together as we receive Dorothy Morrison and the Combs family in St. Mark's Choir. Oh, 
Oh Lord Good God When Jesus was Yeah I'm so glad he washed me Yeah Yeah, yes he did He washed my sin All the way Yeah Oh Lord I thank you, Jesus. You wash all of my sins away. <laughs> now, when I get to heaven, hey, listen here, I'm gonna jump and shout out there. My God, it'll be nobody there. No, 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 no. Oh, that put me out. Talking about a happy day. Yeah. Talking about a happy day, my God. I'm talking about a happy day, my God. I'm talking about a happy day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, oh, good God. When Jesus was, yeah, I'm so glad he washed me. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yes, he did. He wiped my sin all the way, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, good God. Oh, yeah. Oh, happy day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Him sin poured into me, and then I'm saved. Him sin poured into me, then I'm saved. Well, it's been poured into me that my soul.
that we might read the scriptures, having done so, take just a few moments to look at the word of God. Genesis chapter 4. Amen. If you find Genesis chapter 4, you'd already found Genesis, so finding chapter 4 shouldn't be an issue. Genesis chapter 4. Amen. Amen. Beginning at verse number 8, just going to read a couple of verses. It simply says, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? If you turn with me to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, one verse, verse number 2, simply says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And I just want to take a thought for a few moments as we close out this year. I am my brother's keeper. Amen. Take somebody by the hand and simply tell them I am. My brother's keeper. Take somebody else by the hand and simply tell them I am my brother's keeper. I am my brother's keeper. Praise the Lord. You may take your seats before the Lord. I am my brother's keeper. Yes, I am. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am my brother's keeper. We're in the midst of the holiday season. This is not only a time of celebration, but a time of coming alongside one another. It's a time of just remembering how good God has been to each and every one of us. It's a time of giving thanks and passing on the blessings to others. This is a time to remember that indeed I am my brother's keeper. This, this is a time to not be selfish, but to think of others more than you even think of yourself. This bless your heart, is a time to recognize that you ain't the only one. Amen. It's amazing to me how many folk think they're the only one. And everybody just thinking about them. You ever, you ever notice that? Amen. Some folks, you look at them. Why are you looking at me like that? Amen. And, and I wasn't even looking at you. Amen. I, I was thinking about something else. How, how is it? Amen. Part of it is because they don't recognize that they are their brother's keeper. I'm going to lift up three points very quickly and take my seat. Number one, nothing's that important. Get, get a clue. <laughs> Nothing is that important. I need to know. I need to know. I have a responsibility to know how my brother's doing. I say, I, I need to know. I have a responsibility to know how my brother is doing. And yes, you are your brother's keeper. I learned a number of years ago, I've shared before, I shared again. Kind of took me aback. I was in the bank. You know, you go to the bank, take care of your business. And I did the usual thing. How you doing? You ever, you ever did that? Just, just how you doing? To the teller. The teller response was, I'm doing terrible. And my response was, that's good. <laughs> Why? Because I wasn't really interested in how she was doing. It was just something that we sometimes say. How you doing? Well, we don't really want to know your story. <laughs> we ain't got that much time. I'm here taking care of my business. Cash my check. Give me my money. That, that's what I, what's my balance? That's really, but, but to be polite. How you doing? From that I learned, I am my brother's Keep. I, I need to learn to pay attention to those around me because they are those who are hurting. Yes. And if I ask, how are you? I need to be willing to spend the time to hear, to sympathize and to empathize and to lift you up because God has called on me to be my brother's keeper. I am, I am, I am my brother's 
keep as we consider the, our text first of all let me answer the question that's plagued mankind for many a year who did Cain marry he married his sister <laughs> now I just want to clear that up a amen because in Genesis 5 and 4 it says this in the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years and he begat sons and daughters so just know Cain and Abel and Seth were not the only children that Adam and Eve had that's another message I'm not going to go there but just in case you want just who did he marry when he got banished he married his sister don't marry yours that was him <laughs> okay amen I am my brother's keeper when we when we when we when we when we when we look at the word it appears it appears from the text that up until now Adam and Eve had no children it was not until sin had entered into the world that children were born into the world so it appeared that it was not long after they were married after God had presented Eve to Adam or that sin in and into the world that Eve was deceived and Adam was tempted. And here therefore, here therefore is the result of sin being passed down to all mankind. Cain's name means possession. She was rejoicing when Cain was born. God had given her a child. To have a child is a time of rejoicing and then Adam's, Adam Abel's name was vanity and means vanity here God had blessed them with two strapping young men here it appears that they had been raised appropriately to honor and worship God amen Adam no doubt knew he had messed up recognized that his life had now taken on a course that neither he nor God had intended and so in order to perhaps try to straighten things out just a little he was raising up his children to know the law how do I know that because the word tells us that in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord and Adam also brought uh, the firstlings of his flock both understood that they needed to honor God with that which God had blessed them with Cain uh, from that which he had tilled the ground and the ground had given Abel from his flock ah but it seems that in bringing the offering yeah. Cain's offering was rejected and Abel's offering was accepted ah the Bible does not specifically tell us why Cain's offering was rejected there has been speculation yeah. as to why his offering was not received of God there are those who say he brought it but his heart wasn't in it mm -hmm. many folk give to God but their heart just ain't right mm -hmm. they give simply to be seen simply to be heard simply that folk would say well they gave their offering but if your heart isn't right with God, God will not receive that which you offer. There are others who say, well, the reason his offering was not received was because he gave of the fruit of the ground and that was a thanks offering or a peace offering and uh, he wasn't at peace with God and Abel understood that he was a sinner and so he brought uh, of the first things of his flock he brought 
of the fat thereof. In other words, he made a sin offering. And uh, it was important before you brought a thanks offering that you first brought a sin offering. Recognizing you first of all needed to get right with God. Uh, we don't know what it was about his offering. But this much we do know that God uh, had no respect for his offering. Uh, and as a result, it seems that Cain was upset. If you note, uh, he was bothered uh, by what had transpired. Uh, because the word tells us mm, uh, that his countenance was uh, cast down. Well, uh, it seems that something was going on in his heart and uh, in his mind uh, that caused him to have a uh, countenance that had fallen. He was upset. Uh, mm -hmm, and uh, what I stopped by to tell you is now no matter what's going on uh, in your life, nothing uh, is that important to let you become upset with God and with man. Recognize uh, whatever's going on today will not be there tomorrow. Far too often we keep carrying the past on our shoulders. I've stopped by to tell you there are folk today still mad at dead folk. They're dead and they're buried. But folk still upset when you have a conversation with them. They start telling you what all the bad things uh, that person did. If you didn't know them, you would think they smacked them yesterday. But then you learn uh, they've been dead for 10, 15, 20 years and they still uh, carrying that load uh, of resentment. But I stop by to tell you nothing uh, is that for you to have your continents down and your lips curled up. Well, the word tells me that Cain talked with Abel, his brother. The text doesn't tell us what they talked about. Doesn't tell us what was discussed. But whatever it was, it seemed that Cain was even more upset. We have to be careful about letting little things uh, bother us. Little things uh, upset us. Little things lay heavy on our heart because you never know where those little things uh, will lead. Cain was angry. We know from verse 6 that he was angry and his countenance fell. He was angry and he looked the part. Have you ever met somebody that always looks angry. I'm not saying that was you. I'm saying have you ever met somebody that whenever you see them something's always wrong. Always got their lip stuck out. They're mad at you and they're mad at the world. They don't know what a smile looks like. And when they get forced to smile they grin because it's so painful. Their face hasn't been that way in so long. And they don't know how to smile. He said he was angry and his countenance had fallen. And he looked the part. But I found that when men are angry with God, they get angry with everybody else as well. They're mad at God because he didn't do this and he didn't do that and he didn't give them this and he didn't give them that and they're mad at God and they're mad at the boss and they're mad at you and they're kicking the dog and they hate the wife and mad at the children. They're just mad. Yes, I know you haven't met anyone like that but I know somebody like that. I love them. I love them, but it pains me just to be around them. I got to hear stories about dead folk who did them in. When I remind them, I say they did. He tell me maybe they ain't dead. <laughs> I 
What are you going to do? Then maybe they done lied. Maybe, maybe it ain't the truth. Maybe they done told me they were dead. No, they did. dead. They did. dead. They did. Leave them alone. They did. dead. But anger will eat you up on the inside. Anger will take you places you don't want to go. And, and, and some folks think anger going to make them feel better. But I stop by to tell you, anger will only make you feel worse. I, I'm, I'm going to share this real quick because I love talking about myself. Amen. We bought our first house. They didn't want us to have it. In fact, the first one we tried to get, they actually took it off the market because we were black and it was a white neighborhood. Next one I got, they had the audacity, the unmitigated God, to send me a letter asking me where I got my money. I don't know if that ever happened to you, but they asked me, where did you get your money? So I wrote them a letter. But also let me, let me mention this, this is BC, before Christ. <laughs> Share the whole letter, but let me tell you, it was BC. I sent him the letter, had a few choice words. Amen. Told him I wasn't, I wasn't a thief, I wasn't a robber, I ain't hit nobody. In the, I had all that in the letter. Just because I'm black don't mean I had all that in the letter. Amen. Amen. I, and the more I wrote the letter, the more angry I got. But I wrote that letter, and I gave the letter to my real estate agent, and he read the letter. He looked at me and said, you sure you want to send this? <laughs> oh yeah, I want to send it. Anyway, long story short, I sent the letter, within a week I had the house. The letter had its desired effect. But I kept a copy of the letter. Years later, every now and then I'd find that letter and I'd read that letter. And when I read that letter, I'd get mad all over. <laughs> My brother said, burn that letter. <laughs> Sister Brown got tired of me reading that letter and getting up, so she, she did. She got rid of that letter <laughs> for me. <laughs> Anger will destroy you. Yeah. And have you mad at folk that don't think or care nothing about you? It will take you in places you don't want to go. Abel hadn't done a thing to Cain. But his anger had waxed hot. And he was just mad. And sometimes when you're just mad, you'll take it out on folk that don't have nothing to do with you being mad. We don't know, we don't know, we don't know what they talked about, what the discussion was. But whatever it was, he killed him. Rose up against his brother. He couldn't kill God, he was mad at God. But since he couldn't kill God, he, he substituted his brother. He took the brunt of that force. I tell you, nothing's that important. So if you're carrying anything about anybody, you need to let it alone. You need to talk to God and say, God, take this off of me. Because nothing is that important for you to carry that stuff around. I know folk did you wrong. They were wrong. I acknowledge they were wrong, but leave it alone because nothing's that important. The reality is, whoever it was has forgotten about you a long time ago. But you also need to know how your brother's doing. The Lord said unto Cain, where is that brother? Where is he? Where is he? And he said, I don't know. Some, some believe Cain was asked this question 
on the next Sabbath, the next time he came to worship after the murder had been committed, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord in a religious assembly or worship time, and Abel was missing, whose place did not used to be empty. You know, there's some, oh, I'm gonna get in trouble. 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 You're gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna get in trouble. Amen. Because there's some folk when you, as past, you miss them in church, you know something wrong. Somebody call them out. They're not here because they, they're normally here. But there's other folk. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to get in trouble. They, amen. There's other folk. Amen. They're missing and they're always missing. <laughs> I, actually, I got in trouble one time as a past. Somebody, because sometimes I'm, I'm human. I want you to know. That's just. I know I'm a pastor. I love the Lord. But I'm, I'm human. There's one person asked me, Pastor, I wasn't, I wasn't in church. I ain't been to church over a month. Nobody called. You, nobody called. I was sick. I'm human. Let me preface it with, I'm human. I, how was I supposed to know you were sick this time? <laughs> you, you always missing? It ain't the first time you've been missing for a month. Last time you just went on vacation. You ain't telling nobody. How's I supposed to know this time? The Bible said if you sick, call for the elders. Did you call anybody? They got mad at me. Because I messed up. I don't do that anymore. That's the word. I don't do that no more. Somebody say, Pat, I was going to say, I'm so sorry I didn't call. I, I didn't know you were ill. <laughs> I should have I should have known. I should have known this. I didn't but Abel was missing from worship and God knew he was normally there. Yes, yes. Where? Where is your brother? The seat is empty. We need to know that God recognizes. He takes note of who's there and who's gone. Yes, yes. Huh? God knows if you show up every now and then when you feel like it. You know, you feel like doing God a favor, so I'm going to show up this Sunday. But God knows why you're coming. Here, says Cain asked the question. Not only because uh, there was just cause to suspect him because uh, indeed he had malice toward and hated Abel but because God knew that he was guilty. God knew exactly what he had done and so he asked him this rhetorical question where's your brother? He asked him to give him an opportunity to confess his crime, to confess his sin and to seek forgiveness. Where is your brother? Those who will be justified before God, you must first of all confess and ask God for forgiveness. Uh, Cain responds, he pleads he ain't guilty of nothing. He adds to his rebellion of sin, tries to cover it up uh, with a lie. I don't know where he is. Uh, he knew exactly what had become of Abel, for he had uh, killed him. And yet he stands before God and tries to deny the reality that's going on uh, all around the man that's in his heart. Here we see the devil was both a murderer and a liar from the beginning. In all of those who serve him, are also murderers, if not indeed, but surely in word. And uh, they don't mind lying to you and uh, to me. See how the mind of a sinner is so blinded and uh, distorted. They're hard hardened that they don't recognize there is a God. Uh, and sin uh, has taken hold of their heart and uh, their mind. They believe that somehow. It's possible to conceal uh, their sins uh, from God. Yeah. And so, not only does he say, I, I don't know where he is, 
but he also uh, charges God for his injustice. He puts this question to God. God, uh, ask him a question. And now uh, he asks God a question. Well, Lord, uh, you ask me where my brother is. I need you to understand, Lord, uh, and answer my question. Am I uh, my brother's keeper? As I prepare to close this message, uh, stop by to tell you uh, that yes, you are your brother's uh, keeper. He should have uh, humbled himself. He should have said, I got angry uh, and I messed up and murdered my brother. But rather than that, he flies uh, in the face of God uh, and tell him, am I my brother's keeper? Surely, surely, my brother's old enough to take care of himself. Why should I have charge over him? Why are you asking me if he's missing? Send the police. If he's missing, send out the dogs. If he's missing, ask his mama and his daddy. But don't ask to me because I am not my brother's keeper. Recognize that you and I have a duty to watch over and care for our brother. Those that are hurting, those that are hung, don't have nobody to watch over them. God has called on you and me to look over them, to pray for them, to come alongside them. For I heard, I heard Paul say, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We are here directed to bear one another's burdens. We are here to support one another when we mess up. We are here to be there for one another when we need a hand. He says fulfill the law of Jesus Christ. I am, yes I am, my brother's keeper. I heard, I heard King Solomon say two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. And if they fall, one will lift him up. But woe unto him that has nobody when he falls to lift him up. If two lie together, they'll get a heat. But a high can one be warm all by himself. And finally, if one prevail against him, then two shall withstand him and a threefold court. Full cord is not quickly broken. I found out from TV that even the Lone Ranger had Tonto and Batman had Robin. We have to look out for one another. Why? Because I am, I am, I am, I am my brother's keeper. Fulfill my joy. Be like-minded. Having love one for another. Being of one mind. Let everyone, every man look not only to his own things, but every man to the things of others. Let us consider one another and provoke one another under good works. Let this man, let this man, let this man be in you, which was also in 
Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, didn't think it robbery to be equal with God, but he came down through 42 generations. He made himself a man like you and me. Yes, he did, because he too was his brother's keeper. If it wasn't for him, I'd still be lost. If it wasn't for him, there'd be no joy. There'd be no peace. He came down to let us know that God loves you. That God loves you. And God is watching out for you. And God is taking care of you. And if God is taking care of you, surely you should be able to just be a blessing to somebody. If God has blessed you. How many in here has God has blessed? If God has blessed you, you have to be a blessing to somebody else. Somebody else ought to look at you and just think, I see God in you. Because I know what you did. You didn't have to do it. But you did it anyway. And when they say thank you, you can let them know you know who you can really thank. You can thank my God. Because he's the one that put you on my heart. He, he's the one that has allowed me to be a blessing. Because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have nothing to bless you with. I am my brother's keeper. We, we have a God-given responsibility. One day he's going to ask you, where's your brother? Where's your sister? You don't want to say, I don't know. You want to be able to reach out. I prepare to take my seat there. Those during this holiday season that don't have anybody to call, anybody to swap, stop by. You got to think about those individuals in your life and whoever they are. Give them a call. Talk to them. Be your brother's keeper. My say, Pastor, what are you doing? I'm going to tell you. Because I don't ever ask anybody to do something I don't do myself. One of the things I learned in ministry is it seems that after a person finishes pastoring, get up a little age and can't be in the pulpit no more. Not too many people call. Not too many people make that connection. So there are several pastors who have retired that I stay in contact with. And every now and then I call them, just take them out to lunch. I, I'm not saying this, you say, oh, Pastor, you, no, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, there's a great, I learn more in those times from them. When I'm just sitting and hearing the wisdom that falls from their lips, it's worth the time and the effort. Great heads do mean something. I mean, you've been around a little while. And I think they actually recognize I'm my brother's keeper. And they really want to impart some of that wisdom before they leave. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus who showed his love for us by giving his life on Calvary's cross. Thank you, Lord, that because he died, we never have to be separated from you. But even more importantly, because he lives, we can forever dwell in your presence. And Lord, my Lord, there are those around us who don't know you. And Master, help us to reach a hand out to them. Help us to touch our brothers, our sisters, and draw them closer to you. Thank you, Father, for the season. Season of giving, season of receiving, season of rejoicing because of what Jesus did on Calvary's cross. And Master, to this end, we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name.